Okay, next, I think it's time we go ahead and pull in our select columns and let's build out our model because the next tool is easier to see the uh, value of it once we have a model built. So uh, let's pull in our select columns. Uh, from here, um, let's pick a smaller number. Clearly we don't need ID. Let's pull in loan status. Um, I'm going to skip all of these variables that are about the loan itself all the way down to, I'll grab employment length, homeownership, annual income, verification, purpose. Um, I think DTI is typically pretty useful. Let's grab in um, months since last delinquency. Uh, let's call it good with that for now. All right, so let's pull in a, uh, whoops, train model pill. Since I'm predicting a categorical variable, let's pull in a, I need a multi-class uh, because I've got many values. So let's pull in a multi-class, uh, I don't know, neural network. Let's see what we get out of that. Grab our score data, our score model. Whoops, uh, I don't even have my split data pill in here yet. You might be wondering why I forgot that. Split data. Same pill we have up here, but we're using it for a different purpose. The split rows and so the regular expressions. So connect that one instead, that one, that one. On my split data, I'll set my random seed. Leave it at 50% because we have plenty of data. Train model, let's select loan status. Okay and my evaluate. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and run selected. I'll pause the video. All right, so let's take a look here. Visualize. Okay, so this is kind of what I thought would happen. We have here a uh, multi-class model. Our confusion matrix shows that every row was predicted to be current. That's because 98.2467% of our data set were all current. So it's really tough to predict when you don't have a nice, relatively normal distri uh, distribution among uh, categories. Now that doesn't make sense. Normal uh, normality is something referred to with numeric variables. But in this case, what I mean is simply more of a widespread distribution of the actual uh, loan status values among the different categories. So here's what we need to do. First of all, let's switch and try out a regression model. And let's see if that tells us anything more. So this is a great example of where our accuracy looks fantastic, but it's simply hyperinflated because our data set is so skewed. So our regression model will give us a better idea of how good we're truly predicting based on those independent variables we chose right here in select columns. So let's remove a multi-class neural network. I'm going to grab the Poisson uh, regression algorithm for a very specific reason, and you'll see why. So. Uh, in just a moment. So let's change our select columns. No longer can we use loan status. We're predicting a numeric variable. So let's grab loan status numeric. This is the rank ordered version um, of loan status that we made previously. And then in train model, of course, let's switch that out from loan status to loan status numeric as well and run this. Now when we run it, we're going to get an error. See if you can think through and remember why while this is running. So the idea is that right here, this algorithm is, it's ideal for count-based data. Now that's not what we have, but that doesn't mean that we can't use it. Uh, count would be like predicting the number of votes someone gets an election result or something like that. Now here, the reason why I have an error is because it says that we are trying to train a, this model on a negative or a value that's negative. So one of the rules of this algorithm is that uh, if you're gonna do count-based data, there can't be any negative values in the dependent variables or labels. And we have that. So we have a few options. One, we could pick a different variable that doesn't have that problem with, but let's say for some reason we really, really wanna try this one. We have another tool that will make that possible. Let's move this down, move down our split data, even our select columns, and let's put it right here. So bring in the apply math operation pill. And let's connect the dots here. So this one has a lot of options and there's no way we'll be able to go through all of them, but just take a look. First of all, let's select the column that we want to apply the operation to. 
we know that that's loan status numeric so let's grab all of these move them back by default it grabbed all the numeric values and put them over there but we only want to do this with one so in this case we're going to use a very basic no not a basic function we're going to use an operation the add operation and operators are add divide multiply subtract whoops oops okay and in particular we're going to add a constant the same number to everything so it could be that we add it one column to another that's what the column sets for but now we're going to just add the number three to everything oh let's make it four that means all of our numbers are positive so the negative three which is uh charged off will now be a one and it'll rank order from one up to seven for charged off default very late somewhat late grace period current fully paid up to fully paid will be number seven so this simply just shifts all of the values up by four so that we can use that algorithm so uh, down here the output output mode is important though this says just return the changed result that's not what we want that'll only return the dependent variable and nothing else what we want is in place meaning let everything flow through to the next select columns pill so that one can do the filtering and then replace the existing values in place of the dependent variable with a plus four on everything. So let's go ahead and run that and show you that it works now. And then when this is done, I'll show you a few other options with that apply math operator. Okay, and that all went through just fine. Let's take a look at our results here out of curiosity. Yeah, it's still really bad, essentially zero. So that's okay. Uh, that means that we gotta keep going. I'm not in this video going to go through picking better columns. I know those are good columns. What we need is a better dependent variable. So it didn't work switching to a regression. What we really need then uh, is to uh, ch grab a different chunk of the data and focus on particular values. But this is enough now. Uh, we'll, we'll do that in the next video. For now, apply math operation. Let me just show you some of your other options here. Uh, basic. Let's say, like in this class at the very beginning, we learned how to test for nonlinear uh, relationships. Let's say that we found that there was a decreasing rate, uh, uh, decreasing rate issue where something needed to be transformed with a natural log in order to come up with a better prediction than a straight line through uh, a scatter plot. We could use down here the natural log function. Let's say that you found an exponent, an exponential. Um, uh, relationship like a squared or a cubed, ter cubed term you could use this and append the new columns so that you can keep not just replace the existing column but append new columns uh, with exponential variables so uh, there's all kinds of options here for you to transform data uh, rounding options as well that's nice uh, anyway anything you can dream of practically you can do here you can automate the cleaning process all right that's enough for this one